Bonjour tout le monde et bienvenue à Learn French by Sucheta. Je m'appelle Sucheta, votre enseignante de la langue française et dans cette vidéo, on va apprendre une expression en français, il y a. That means we are going to learn a very useful expression in French that is, il y a. Before we begin with this video, I would like to introduce you to my website www.learnfrenchbysuchita.com where you will find recorded courses for all your French language needs. We have courses for DELF A1, DELF A2, DELF B1, TEF TCF recorded course, French phonetics as well. We have special courses for our school students ranging from grade 5 to grade 8. We also have courses for university students who are enrolled in certificate course or diploma course in Delhi University. And finally, we also have courses for our school students who are aiming to appear for their Delph Prem or Delph Junior examinations. So hurry up and check it out. So without any further ado, let's get into the video. And in this video, we are going to learn a very, very useful expression in French, which is il y a. Il y a. Now, il y a. That's actually composed of three different words. Ilia, yes, we say it together, we say it as Ilia, but it is composed of three different words. Il, I, A. Il, I, A. Now, what exactly it is? Il, that's actually your subject pronoun. Je, tu, il, elle, nous, vous, il, elle, all these are your subject pronouns. If you do not know what are subject pronouns, I'm dropping the link in the card above. You can watch that video and then come back here again. So, this is my subject pronoun, followed by e. E, that's your pronoun. Okay? And a, that's the verb avoir. Okay? Il, e, a. Together, it is il, ya. That's your subject pronoun, that's your pronoun, why, and that's your verb, avoir. Together, it is il y a. Now, what does it mean? It actually means there is or there are. I understand that il, that actually is a subject pronoun, which means a he or it, but here it doesn't mean that. Il y a together means there is or there are. Okay? Now, I have seen a lot of people confusing ilia by il a. That's not equivalent. No. Ilia, that's there is or there are. But il a or l a, that's actually the verb avoir. If you do not know what is the verb avoir and how do you conjugate it, I'm dropping the link in the card above for the video wherein I have explained the verb avoir. You can watch that video and then come back here again. So il a. Remember, it's not il y a, that's il a. Let's say il y a, this is il a. Now, il a, that means he has or it has. Or l a, which means she has or it has. So, these two are not equivalent. Il a, he has or it has. And il y a, which means there is or there are. Okay, let's look at some of the examples wherein I have used il y a, okay? Now, il y a une assiette sur la table. Il y a une assiette sur la table. Il y a, which means there is or there are. Now, here, since this is singular, so of course it would mean there is. There is a plate on the table. Il y a des fourchettes sur la table. So you can have something singular also, you can have something plural also, because il y a means both, there is or there are. Now, there are some forks on the table. Okay, let's look at the third example. Il y a sept jours dans une semaine. Now again, sept jours, that means seven days. So that's plural. Of course, il y a in this case would mean there are. So there are seven days in a week. So you can frame any example. Let's say there are 12 months in a year. So how would you say that? You will say il y a douze mois dans une année. Okay, how would you say there are some pens on the table? You would say il y a des stylos sur la table. So il y a, that means there is or there are. 
Now, we just learned Ilia, and I told you Ilia, which means there is or there are. Now, that's actually there in the present tense. Let's learn that in past tense. So, in past tense, you say Ilia U. So, here what have I done? I have actually conjugated the verb avoir in passé composé, in the past tense. So, Ilia U. So, of course, now it would mean there was or there were. Let's look at few examples. If you want to say there were some manifestations last month, you will say there were. So there were is equivalent to ilia u. Ilia u. That's not o. Oh, that's u. Ilia u. Conjugation of the verb avoir in the past tense. So ilia u. De manifestation le mois dernier. So, which means there were some manifestations last month. Or let's say there was a strike last year. So, il y a eu, again, il y a eu, which means there was a strike. Une grève l'année dernière. So, there was or there were, that would be il y a eu. Now, let's learn il y a in the imperfect tense. That's actually imperfect. And perfect. So what do you have to do? You have to conjugate the verb avoir into the tense which is imperfect. So now it is il y avait. Il y avait. Now il y a eu, which we learned in the previous slide, of course that also means there was or there were. And il y avait also means there was or there were. Because passé composé, if you conjugate it in passé composé, then also it is past tense and imperfect tense is also the past tense. So the English equivalent for both would be same. Okay. But if you, uh, how would you differentiate it? So il y a eu, that was passé composé, and il y avait, that's imperfect tense. So this actually we use mainly in the sentences wherein you describe something, describing your background, okay? So for example, il y avait beaucoup de monde à la fête which means there was a lot of crowd in the party. So here you're actually describing your background, that what was there in the party. There was a lot of crowd in the party. So, il y avait beaucoup de monde à la fête. Let's look at one more example. Il y avait des montagnes dans le village. That means there were some mountains in the village. So, il y avait. Here also you are describing the background. So, you say il y avait. Il y avait, which means there was or there were. Okay, now let's look at il y a in the future tense. In the future tense, il y a will become il y aura. Il y aura. Here I've conjugated the verb avoir into the future simple tense. So it becomes il y aura. Il y aura, which means there will be. Now, il y aura du vent demain. There will be some wind tomorrow. Il y aura du bouillard. There will be some fog. So, il y aura, that would mean there will be. Okay, now let's learn how do you say il y a in the negative form. So, just now we learned il y a, which is there in the present tense, which means there is or there are. Now, what happens in the negative form? Of course, in the negative form, you apply ne and pa. So, how would you do that? You will say il n'y a pa. Il n'y a pas. Il n'y a pas, which means there isn't, there is not, or there are not. So that's actually the negative. Okay. Now here I've written an example. Il y a une assiette sur la table. There is a plate on the table. Now I want to negate it. I want to say there is not, there isn't any plate on the table. So the negation of il y a would be il n'y a pas, as I just told you. Il y a, il n'y a pas. So, il n'y a pas. Now, there is a rule which you have to see. This is your indefinite article. Whenever you negate, in the negative sentences, your indefinite articles, that means un, une, and they, they are your indefinite articles. So, your, in the negative sentences, your indefinite articles always change into the, or the apostrophe. So, here it would be il n'y a pas. Das yet. So actually it was DE, but since as yet is beginning with a vowel, therefore DE changed into D apostrophe. So il n'y a pas d'assiette sur la table. This means there is a plate on the table. This would mean there isn't 
any plate because the quantity finishes any plate on the table. Okay, next example. Il y a des fourchettes sur la table. Il y a des fourchettes sur la table. There are some forks on the table. And now you want to write its negative. So the negative of il y a is il n'y a pas. Il n'y a pas. And as I just told you that indefinite articles, they change into the. So il n'y a pas de fourchettes sur la table. So there are some forks on the table. There aren't any forks on the table. Okay, let's look at the past tense. So I told you il y avait, which means there was or there were. So the negative of this would be il n'y avait pas. Just now I told you il y a, il n'y a pas. Similarly, il y avait, il n'y avait pas. So il y avait, which means there was or there were. And il n'y avait pas, which means there wasn't or there were not. Okay, now let's look at an example. Il y avait des gens. À la fête. There were some people in the party. Now you want to negate it. So, il y avait, the negation would be, il n'y avait pas. Il n'y avait pas. And as I just told you, since it is an indefinite article, it will change into the. So, il n'y avait pas de gens à la fête. There were some people in the party. There were not any people in the party. So the quantity finishes, therefore they changes into the. Okay, let's now look at the future tense, il y aura, il y aura, which means there will be, there will be. So il y aura, negative is il n'y aura pas, il n'y aura pas, there will not be. Okay, so il y a, il n'y a pas, il y avait, il n'y avait pas, il y aura, Il n'y aura pas. So let's look at an example. Il y aura du vent demain. So there will be some wind tomorrow. Now I want to negate it. So what will I say? I'll say, il n'y aura pas. Now this is your partitive article. Okay. Now just like indefinite articles, partitive articles also change into the if you have a negative sentence. By the way, if you do not know what are partitive articles and how do you use them, I'm dropping the link in the card above wherein I have explained what are partitive articles. You can watch that video and then come back here again. So, il n'y aura pas, instead of du, it would be de, zon, demain. There will be some wind tomorrow. There will not be any wind tomorrow. Okay, there is also one more usage of ilia which is completely different from whatever we have learned till now. So it is also used to refer to a period of time in the past. So here ilia doesn't mean there is or there are. Instead, the meaning is ago. Ago. So after that, there should always be a time period. For example, j'ai appris à conduire il y a dix ans, which means I learned to drive 10 years ago. Okay, literally it would mean I learned to drive there is 10 years. But no, it means I learned to drive 10 years ago. So, ilia, if it is followed by a time period, the meaning changes into ago. Second example, il est allé à Rome il y a 5 ans. So, that means he went to Rome five years ago or it has been five years that he went to Rome. Now I would want that you write few sentences wherein you are using Ilya and mention them in the comment section below. I'm going to check it out.